Greetings, everyone. Welcome to our webinar on teaching geosciences in quarantine. My name is Svet Ross Lazarov, and I'm an instructional designer at the Comet program. And joining me today are Andrea Smith, an instructional designer and meteorologist at the Comet program, Brian Garanti, an instructional designer and meteorologist at the Comet program, Matt Kelsch, a hydrometeorologist. Tony Mankus, an instructional designer, and all of us work at the Comet program. And together, we would like to share with you our suggestions and ideas for transitioning from classroom-based instruction to distance learning, based on our experience of offering distance learning courses over the last 20 years. Before we begin, we wanted to thank the JPSS program for their support of this webinar and subsequent activities. All right. As you begin your transition to distance learning, you will encounter three main challenges. The first one is connection. How to maintain connection when your students are located in different places. The second one will be engagement. How to engage your learners in meaningful activities in an online environment. And the last challenge will be how to assess your students in an online environment. We will take a look at each of these challenges in turn and we'll discuss them in the context of the two main types of distance learning. The first one is synchronous learning events like the webinar that we are doing right now where we have people from different locations coming together in the same digital space. And we also will discuss it in asynchronous learning events the things that our learners can do on their own independently online at home. And we wanted to begin by discussing the role that course structure can play in creating an online space that your learners will want to come back to repeatedly week after week in the same way that they come to your class in person. And for this, I'd like to turn the floor over to Matt Kelsch. All right, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Matt Kelsch. I'm a hydrometeorologist here at Comet. And what I will be talking about is structuring the course. And this could be done for both synchronous and asynchronous. But the examples I'm using are going to be mostly from an asynchronous series of courses we have done with the World Meteorological Organization, the WMO in hydrologic sciences. And so there are some challenges with asynchronous where there's not live instruction, there's challenges with keeping people engaged when you're not looking at them and talking to them every day. So in the pre-course environment, and I'll get into a little more detail after this slide, but there are prerequisites, but there are also ways to try to connect personally with the students to get them to feel part of the community of the course. And that can include videos as well as live introductions, even though most of the course is not live, um, we have live introductions where they could actually see us and hear us and, and, and get a sense that, that we know each other. During the course, um, it's where the students are doing primarily self-paced lessons, it's important to have a, an avenue where they could have frequent contact with the instructors if they have questions or just comments about um, things they're learning or, or, or confused with. And I'll show some examples, but of course forum and chat rooms um, serve that purpose quite well. And in fact, as instructors, you should probably be thinking about seeding forums with probing questions. You might even require that the students have to participate in the forum once a week, depending on how long the course is. The course I'm using as an example was a six week course. So we had periodic feedback questions that were required of the students. They were done once a week, the end of each week. There are assignments, the typical ones like quiz completion, if something like a comment module is, is assigned. But we have other kinds of assignments too to try to make the course more relevant and regional to where the student is. And so for instance, in some of the hydrologic courses we did where we had them scope out a good location to put a stream gauge. We had them upload photos and videos of stream locations so we could interact with them whether or not it was a good location 
based on things like, you know, how fast the water is moving and if the bank was unstable, those, those kinds of things. We had capstone assignments, which in our courses were written assignments, where the student can choose a topic that was covered in the course, but write about it in a way that's specifically of interest to them. And in the case with our international courses, something that was localized to their own country. At the end of the course, we'd like to provide grades, but with comments. So we, we give some feedback about why the grades were um, the way they are, and we'll show a little bit more on that later. And just like in the beginning, we had a live closing webinar where again, they could see us and we could provide feedback, not only on the course, but also on the capstone assignments, some of the, the more interesting things we found that we thought should be shared with the, the whole group. So I wanna start with in the, the pre-course environment, whatever your learning management system is, we were using Moodle for our WMO courses. It's always good to get students engaged by having a chat room and some things you post right away to tell them what it's about, a course schedule. In our courses, we had a map of student locations because they were from a number of countries that might not be as relevant for what you're doing, but there could be other things you think are, are very relevant that should be in the pre-course environment to, to get them familiar with what the other participants in the course are like and, and where they're coming from. So connecting, um, connecting your, your students with, with the material. Um, as I say, in the pre-course environment, there was a course overview video that just gave them a feel for what the course was gonna be about, as well as a live introduction with the, with the instructor so they could see us. I also have in that yellow box there, I show there was a prerequisite module and quiz that they had to complete. And the reason wasn't specifically because this is material they need to know for the course, that was part of it. But the other reason we do this before the course is this helps us see if they properly registered on the learning management system, as well as on the MedEd system if you're using Comet modules. So it's a way to get some of those problems out of the way before the course really gets rolling. So it's always good to have pre-course activity that helps kind of shake out that kind of, those kinds of issues. The course forum I mentioned is a, a primary place where the whole class could come together and there's a lot of interaction going. And we have a question about that, and then I'll talk a little bit more about the course form. So the question is, what can be shared in a course forum or a chat room to increase engagement in the online learning environment? And you could choose um, as, as many of these that you think are applicable. And for those of you that have the Turning Point app on your mobile devices, you should now see the question displayed on your screen and you can enter your answers to this question. We have folks a, a minute or so. The answers are starting to pour in. All right, just a couple of more seconds. And let's take a look at the results. All right, so people chose all of them, but A and B look like the, the most common. And, and it's true that this is a place where instructors do provide information. I use the forum a lot at the end of a week to let them know what was coming up the next week and how I, I think things went. But it's also where students pose questions to the instructors and, um, and instructors pose questions to the students. Now, in the WMO courses, we had a team of about three or four instructors that were available knowing that you know, we couldn't all be there all the time. And since we were covering a whole bunch of time zones, but questions tended to get um, answered within a day when a student posed a question of a particular topic they had difficulty with. Forums are also a place to share photos and videos, although for assignments that required that, we tended to set up drop boxes um, instead. And, and I'll 
get into that, I think, in the next slide. Um, it's, it's, as I said, it's also a place to send reminders. But the first two are really where it's used for a lot, just communication between instructors and attendees. In the next slide, I think I have an example of, this is a kind of enlarged one small section of a whole page of a forum. And in this, you see several kinds of activities where I was introducing, this was week five of a six week course, introducing the fact that their written assignments are coming due and, and what we're expecting from that. There was a student that was asking a question about unit hydrograph theory, and there were three responses from the different instructors answering his questions. And, and then there was a student telling us what his uh, final written assignment was going to be about so we could approve it. So this is some of the interactions that take place in the forum. Okay, if we go to the next slide. So once we're in the course, Again, the, the yellow box on the right there, I enlarged so you could see it a little better. The first uh, assignment was a comment module, runoff processes, and they're required to do the quiz, and, and there could be a number of comment modules. But in this example, the second assignment, measurement of river discharge, was something our colleagues put together at the National Water Academy in, in India. And they had a number of spreadsheets and different uh, ways that they had to calculate river discharge and, and put them in a drop box. You see the second line from the bottom. And then the instructors in India would grade those. So there are different ways we could do the assignments. Um, and then there were feedback questions at the end of each week. These questions covered both um, some of the, the important points that were covered in the week, but also ask for feedback from the students about how things are going so that the instructors know what needs to be adjusted as we go along. Then if I skip ahead in a six week course to the sixth week, when we get to the end, we had a drop box for the final written assignments. Um, there were, the students were able to choose whether or not they wanted to share the final assignment. They wouldn't be sharing their grades, but a lot of times, they wrote things that really would be useful to the other students, and most of them did choose to share it, but they weren't required to. Um, we had a closing webinar where we went over the whole course and, um, and, and then a final evaluation survey. And as I mentioned along the way, we also had assignments where students could submit videos and, and um, photographs as part of the answers to questions um, to keep it interactive, get them outside and have them take pictures of things that we're, we're talking about worked really well in hydrology. 